Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to another episode of Gaijin Gaming. Today I'm talking about... Dun, 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 dun. Star Ocean, the second story. Which is actually, uh, I'm just going to say this flat out right now. <laughs> it is uh, definitely my favorite Star Ocean game. So, I, I don't know what that what that, <laughs> what that means for anybody else. But, uh, this is... I really was disappointed with 3... Four, yeah, that too. Uh, one I, I enjoyed a little bit, at, but however, Star Ocean Second Story, definitely my favorite Star Ocean game. I guess a, I'm going to get into that uh, the game a little bit. It's was released in it was released in Japan on July 30th, 1998. And then it made its way to the U.S. and North America in not in, but on May 30, yeah, May 31st, 1999, it's a two-disc game that was published by Enix, however, it was developed by Triace. Now, a little bit about the game. The game is not a traditional turn-based RPG. It is more excuse me it is when you when you get into a battle it's not your traditional turn-based RPG but rather it, it takes place in an arena where you can run around and do attacks as well as the enemy they can do attacks and you actually can do like, skills and I guess, magic and sometimes depending on the uh, arena you'll have some sort of obstacles or, you, or some sort of hazards in, the, in the, the battle as you level up you you gain these skill points and you can actually spend these skill points on different things uh, that can either add well not experience but they're going to add they can boost your stats you can increase your strength or your concentration your HP and you can also use the skill points for other skills to increase such as ones that will allow you to use more kind of auto automatic sort of actions like feints or sort of, uh, counters and things like that however there's a, another set of skills within the whole skill list uh, of skills that you can Put these skill points to and that those are things such as like whistling or cooking or music and or you know aesthetic sense and these skills actually are kind of more for outside of the battle where you can actually create like for example you can write novels or uh, you can actually by learning enough uh, different skills you can actually become a blacksmith and forge your own equipment or you can use the cooking skill to make food instead of using the items that you can buy at the stores and you can also learn things like such as forgery to make your own I like, make your own kind of ex expensive imitations and then you know make <laughs> a lot of money that way or you can do pickpocketing and you can pickpocket that ah, the people in the town However, this comes at a price, and that price is that you, if you're doing some of those negative things, it'll affect your character's, mm, how, how the ca characters see the, the main character. So if, if you're pickpocketing, uh, it increases, there's a chance that the other characters will look, na they'll quote unquote notice it or it'll, it'll your character's friendships will decrease and this is something that you don't you can't like actually see what how what level of quote unquote friendship you, you or how strong your relationship is with the other characters but you can actually make them you can make them stronger by doing private actions by entering in by entering in towns and uh, pressing I believe the, the triangle button and you'll when you enter in the town your 
characters will split off and you can actually interact with them and do different things with them. And I always really liked that because it added a depth to characters that if you were to do the same things but not allow the private actions, so to, to make it like a something that ha that has to occur for the ex the extent or not the extent but how expansive all those things are I think it would drag the game out and make it a lot longer and I don't think I don't think that would do well I, just, I, I, I would just I, to me it would, it would make it kind of dull personally I mean I, I like reading you know I enjoyed the, reading the diet the dialogues and stuff however I, f I find that if that would happen I think it would really stretch out the game and so it would make it extremely long and I, I really liked how they incorporated in these private actions because if your friendship levels are at a certain strength it, say two characters have a really really high friendship level and one of those fall and one of those characters falls in battle the other character gets a a stat increase and they turn red and kind of go into this berserk mode and it, 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 it's just kind of nice I, I, it's 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 those kind of subtleties that sometimes you don't think about in games but when they do happen you're like oh that's really cool or you might not notice it at first but then when you reflect on it you're like yeah that was kind of cool and I, 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 I always found that to be really nice and also if your friendship levels are However, there's like how how well you do with their relationships when the game ends, and how if you meet certain conditions, it definitely affects how the game ends. Because the game has I think around 86 or 87 different endings, so really, really, really cool. I think adds a lot of re replayability. Not only that, but the game also offers a lot of. Uh, I had to put this a lot of like side content with not even not even just you know the all the skills that you can build up and all the private actions but you also have uh, excuse me like uh, side dungeons and side bosses and also uh, if you do certain things and recruit characters you can't recruit other characters and so it you you can mix and match and make your own party and what to whatever you feel comfortable with or whatever gives you the best uh, way of playing it or, or whatever you is mo most fun for you or most challenging for you and even even right at the beginning of the game you are forced to pick one of two of the main characters and e even though they both are together they're, they're central characters it's it's they play out differently and if you pick one character you won't be able to get you won't be able to recruit another character later in the game and, and however you pick the other one you're able to recruit that character and that's oh, I, it, it adds another level of replayability that's always really really kind of cool and it it's just it's just, just so awesome <laughs> the uh, the music is composed by um, Motoi Sakuraba and he does a fantastic job with the soundtrack it's, it's, I really enjoy the music for it if you don't know who he is he he, he, he does a lot of music <laughs> this man has a, he does the music for a lot of games uh, for example he does the Tales series he also has done the Golden Sun series and I, I, could, I can go on for quite some time he, he has done uh, Shining the Holy Ark he did music for that as well and he just just lots lots of music and it's and he also takes uh, he also did about here about three profiles music and he also takes some of the music from other games like incarnation of the devil uh you actually can hear in later star ocean games and that's that's from star ocean 2 gotta love that <laughs> 